So let's look at how to combine data from multiple tabs into one tab. So one thing to make sure is that you have the same columns in each of those tabs. So that way we don't have an issue when we go to combine. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this column headers and I'm going to paste it there. I'm not going to add any formatting because it's a table. And then let's go ahead and just add a little bit there. And so here's what we're going to do. This is the simplest way to do this is what's called an array literal. And so it's these two curly braces on my keyboard. It's right above the enter key. And so inside the first one, we're just going to select our data columns. So in this case, we're excluding the header. So starting row two, and then I'm just going to remove the end reference. And then we're going to use semicolon between each tab. So now I can come over here, select February, drag down a couple rows and then hit delete. And then we can do the same thing with March. And so now I can go like this, enter. And there we go. Let's give us a little more room for some of these columns here. And then let's take a look at what this looks like. So if I scroll down, we have a couple weird things going on. So for example, right here, we see a weird gap between January and February. We scroll down again. You can see another weird gap. So where is that coming from? So we scroll down to the bottom of this. You can see we have some extra rows here. And so you may not have a table in here. And so you may have even a thousand rows. And so if you scroll down to the bottom of that first one and you didn't see that second tab, just grab the scroll bar over in the far right and then just drag down and you should catch it down further down. So how do we compensate? What do we do with this weird gap? So what we can do is maybe for a fixed range, we could just determine what the end was, right? So we could determine, oh, it's 83 and we could put that in here. But the issue with doing this is if we add some more data in here, so let's just do 131.25 sample name. And we go back and look and scroll down. So here's two, one. So start of our next tab, but it's not showing up. And so if I go back up here and get rid of that again. So now it's showing up. So how do we get rid of the blank rows without removing the opportunity for more rows? So what we're going to do, the easiest way to do this is using a query function. And so we're just going to put it in front of our first curly brace, and we're going to leave this as our first parameter in query, which is data. The second is the query. And so what we're going to do here inside double quotes is select, and then we're going to use asterisk, which means select all columns. And then we're going to just say where, and we're going to pick a column. So we'll just do column one is not null, meaning not blank or empty. And so now we can put zero as the headers. And that just means do we have any headers like this in that data? And we don't. So we can hit enter. And there we go. Now we scroll down. There's our sample name. And then it goes straight to February. So now we're working as expected. We scroll down a little more. Now at the end of February, we have the March month showing up. And we can scroll down and see that works as well. So that works great. One thing to keep in mind with this is you have to pick a column that's always going to be filled. And so in this case, maybe if the date's always going to be filled, that'd be great. Or you could pick a different one. So maybe name. And so in that case, you just change this to column two because B is column two because one, two, three and so forth. Now, if you don't have a single column, maybe it's going to be date or name is going to be filled, but maybe not both. Then you could just add an or statement. And so we'll change this back to one for column one is not null or column two is not null. And that's going to check both. And then you could just add more ors here, like column three is not null and so forth. And you can just repeat that as many times as you need to. So if you have one column that always have a value, then you can do just something like this. All right. So one thing I want to address real quick here, though, is only downside with query in this kind of scenario is if you have mixed data. So what do I mean by mixed data? So let's take a look at this. So if I put NA in here, so if we look at this one back here, it's blank. So it doesn't pull the NA through. And the reason why is because query is forcing each column to a data type. And so it's determined that there is the majority of numbers in here. So this is a number column. And so if you're using something like tables and you're using the column types, 
then this is going to be kind of addressed for you because you're going to see those alerts anyway. I wanted to point that out in case that is an issue. So if this is an issue, the first thing I would recommend is, is it possible to split that data into another column? So for example, often what's happening is you're really adding notes or something. So I'd highly recommend using a different column to add that data. But if you absolutely have to, then the way we're going to go around this is using a filter. Then the way that we're going to work around this is using filter instead of query. Now the filter function is a little more complicated, but I'm going to go ahead and show you what that would look like. So let's go back to our array literal, just like that. And so now we're back to having our blanks. And so why we do this now is we'd wrap each one of these with filter. And so, for example, we could do a2 to a is not equal to blank. And so that will work just like that. And so now you can see it's ending there with sample name. And so we could wrap each one of these with this. So the only issue I'll show you here in a second. Let's go ahead and finish this up real quick. Not blank. And then filter is not blank. So this is working just like our query was. The only issue is, let's go ahead and add one more. And obviously this doesn't really fit in quarter one, but I'm just gonna show a demo here. So April, let's change this to April. And we are past April. So let's just pretend for a moment that we have no data in April. And so let's go ahead and add April here. So now we have an issue. So the issue is this has a blank result. So if we put this down here, equals filter, we have an NA result. So why is this a big deal? Why doesn't it just show NA? Well, the problem is it doesn't have the same number of columns as the rest of our data. So what we have to do then is basically create an if error around this. And then inside of this if error, we're going to make a custom little array literal with the number of columns that we have. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I added one, two, three, four, five, six. So now if we hit enter, now we're good to go. So if we scroll down, we can see there it is. Four, one, 25, sample. And there it is. Now screwed up the format here. So let's just go ahead and change that. There we go. So there's our sample right there. So now it's working whether we have one or not. And so what is going on here? So what we had to do was just like we're creating a array or data set data table inside of these curly braces, we created a row right here. And so we're separated each data set by a semicolon and that's how you stack vertically on top of each other now if you're going sideways use a comma and so that's why we're using commas here not semicolons and so we basically just created a little row so let's go ahead and pull this out and i'm just going to paste it real quick here and so it's invisible right now but let's just do this let's do column one column two and then we have column one, two, three, four, five, six. So column six. So there it fills in just like that. So that's what we're doing inside of this. And so I could even just show this here. We could say test and then scroll down. So it is showing up here. But when we take out the text, it's just not showing up because it's invisible. So one thing that would happen is if we added another one. So let's go ahead and add this again here. I'm not going to create a actual new tab. Make sure I get that parentheses in there. So we're going to skip that first one and then just put the test in the second one. If we scroll down, technically there is a blank row. And so when you do that, if error, it will leave a blank row if there's an error on it. And that's just how that works. So this is how you'd have to do it if those tabs are empty or potentially empty. Otherwise, you'll wind up with that error. So that's how you combine multiple tabs. And I wanted to wind up with showing you one more thing here. So let's go back to just our three quarters. What happens if in this data, you want a column to show what tab it came from? 
So this is pretty obvious, right? Because it's dates. And so we can easily look and see, oh, this is January. We can scroll down this February and so forth. But what if these dates were varied or maybe these weren't months, but maybe these were sales reps instead. And so this was Katie and Daniel and Simon, but that wasn't in this data. So let's go back to our original query. And then I'm going to show you what we can do here. So query and then select all where column one is not null. So there we go. So the easiest way to do this is to add a column. And we can call this tab name, whatever you want to call it. And then basically you could just do something like if a two is blank, do nothing otherwise jam. And then you could autofill and on a table, this will keep autofilling as you add more data. So for example, we do another 131, 20, 25, it'll fill in. Otherwise you could do something like array formula and just say if a2 to a is blank, we will show nothing. Otherwise, we'll show January. And do something like that. And then if I scroll down, get rid of these, you can see now it's filling in the whole thing. So that's another option you can do as well. One thing with this is people can theoretically type over it and then you have this ref error and it does tell you where the issue is. So there's a couple of different ways of dealing with that. But um, Depending upon your setup, this may work fine if you have tables like this, because tables will automatically copy that formula down as you add more data. And so if we add another row here, we can scroll over here and see there's that formula right there. So that is an option and that's the easiest way. And so I'm just gonna show you how to incorporate this. So we'll just do tab name and we'll just do this again. If A2 is blank, do nothing. Otherwise we'll do Feb. And then we'll let that autofill. And then let's do March as well. If a two is blank, do nothing. Oh, grab my equal at the beginning of the March. And let that autofill. We'll call this tab name as well. So then what we do here is we're just going to copy this format and we'll call this tab name. And then we can just incorporate that column into the data. So we can just add that column here. And there we go. So now we can see that tab name right in that column right there. So the last thing I'm going to do here is what if you don't want to add this column? Maybe you're afraid it's going to get deleted or it has been deleted, something like that. Is there another way that you can handle this? And so I'm going to show you the last method. So this method is more complicated, but if you're willing to hang on, you're going to learn a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the rest of these columns. Hold on, shift, right click, delete columns. And so what we're going to do here, so we've created our own data table. And so what I'm going to do is just like I did before, where I did that array formula and populated that January, we can do the same thing actually with each of these. And so what we can do, and so I'm just going to put these inside brackets again, just to make this more obvious. And then what we need to do is basically populate that Jan text next to this. And so if you remember from a little bit ago when we did the if error, we do a comma and now we can make a new column. And so let's go ahead and just do something like this. Just to mock up what that would look like to add a new column. And I'm just going to use F and we're just going to repeat it. And then we're going to substitute our real formula for that here in a moment. So do F. There we go. All right. So you can see now we're populating that even though it's technically separate, right? So this now we can replace this with a formula that's going to repeat that January. All right. So this is the part where we get a little tricky. And so I'm going to create this over here to begin with. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use a combo of a couple different formulas. So we got this formula called repeat. And so repeat allows us to do something like Jan and we could do it three times. And so you can see it shows up just like that. So we could do Jan and then I'm going to use a special character. I'm going to use the pipe symbol just like that. And then if we wrap this with split inside the split, we can do our text and then a delimiter. So for example, that pipe symbol again and close it out. And then if you look, 
there's Jan, Jan, Jan. So let's go ahead and transpose this. And that's going to make it go up and down. And at this point, you're probably figuring out what we're going to do here. So at this point, what I can do, and we got to be smart about this because what I've done here is I'm combining the data and then I'm stripping out the blanks. So what we want to do here, instead of using this three, we need to determine what the last row in January is. And so the way we're going to do that is rows and then January A2 to A. And then we'll close that out and hit enter. And if we scroll down, we can see it goes past our January. But if we count the number of rows, so I'm just going to select this 90. So if we go over here, so this says 91, but this is starting at one. And so what we can do here is if we take this, cut this, and put this in here instead of this one, it's currently showing blank, but it's because it's still viewing this as a true false. So let's go ahead and do this for the rest of the months. So I'm going to take this whole thing. We'll put this here and put this here and then let's go ahead and flip this out. So this needs to be February. And then change this to February. And then come over to March. This needs to be March. And rows in March. And so hit enter. And voila. Now we have magically come up with the tab name. And if we scroll down, make sure it's applying correctly. So there it ends right there at the end of January. And there's February. And if we scroll down there at the end of February, it goes to March. And we continue down. So that's how we can populate the tab name here instead of in the original tab. So if you're worried about it getting deleted, you can populate it right here instead. And so I know this is a little complicated, but if you learn how to use this, it's going to allow you to create a lot of magic behind the scenes and make the impossible now possible. All right, so that's it for today's video. Make sure to check out the other videos on our channel for more tutorials on both Google Sheets and AppScript. And as always, have a great day.